Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a Dyson DC41 canister. I'm going to have a look today at how to disassemble it, clean it, reassemble it, and uh, I've never done it before, so you'll have to stick with me. Let's clear the bench of all the other paraphernalia, and let's get into it. First things first, press the red thing here to open the bottom, if it will. Yeah, there it is. Right, and once that's open, there should be a way to press this silver button in. That takes off this bit. Oh, okay. Bit of hair, bit of gross. I should have emptied that first. So this bit here, you can take these rubber seals off to clean them, but it's a nightmare. You can take out this. That's not so bad, actually. You can take this out quite easily, this red strip, by popping in this little tab here, so just push it in and pull it out, but that's not normally the bit we need to clean, so that's uh, that's fine. That'll get dirty straight away, so I'm probably not even gonna bother cleaning it. If you wanted to, you could just give it a wash. Soapy water, like I will do with the rest of this thing, but what I really wanna get into is the inside of this, because in here, internally, you can see the fur on the inside of that. It's just dust. That's the bit that's tough, and I've not been into this one, and so it'll be fun, I imagine. Start by opening this here, clip that off, get the filter out. Filter's pretty dirty, pretty dirty. You just wash that out under a tap, we'll give that a go. Then, this thing here, does it pop off? How does it pop off? Yeah, it should do. Do I need to though, that's the question, to clean it. Yeah, so there's a little plastic tab on that. You have to rotate it open, but not completely open. So open fully and then back a few degrees and then out and then do the same on the other side. You can see where there's like a little keyway in that. You can see where there's like a little keyway. It looks like the face of a skeleton or something. So you have to line up that bit there to get it out. This you could take apart further, but given that it's clean, I'm not going to. It's not worth the hassle. Again, same as the other thing, there's just the pair of little red claws on each side there that you have to pop in both together and then push that upwards. And just remember when you're reassembling it that there's a spring in there. Now we're getting into it. Sometimes there are screws to be seen and other times, like this, there are not. So what makes this possible? All the way around here, there are snaps. One, two, three, four, five. And the only way to deal with them is brute force, if I think. So be prepared. No, maybe not. There's one. Do that one. Put in a big screwdriver or even a piece of wood or something like that. I'm using a small flat bladed screwdriver. Do another one. Yeah, you see, there we go. You can damage the paint. And I think these are painted or coated in some way. You can damage them or if they're br gone brittle, they'll crack. Once we've got three off, we should be sailing plane. So I'm going for the middle of it. I'm giving it a twisting motion to get it off. And that seems to work. I'm surprised some of these are really complicated. Even complicated, difficult. DC24 is a bit of a nightmare. And DC25 and DC40. I've posted other videos on the other ones. So we're only a few minutes into the video and we're going for it. Right, this spring... It becomes important when we're putting it back together, but this spring has a little wiggly, wiggly tail on it. So, watch out for that. And then also this silver tab here is a little spring behind it as well. They're painful. Now, here's the dirt. Oh, look at that. It's not too bad, but it's not too good either. Right, and oh, look at this. So what I'll do is I'll show you what we're like in here. It's just... Full of dust. I don't. I'm going to tap that out outside. Now sometimes this part here, actually, yeah, I've not. Should have done that first. Maybe I didn't realize. So this piece here is separate from this outer piece here, and it's the it's the difficult bit. I haven't spotted that, but you've got to get get in here near the silver bit with a screwdriver. Same one should do it, and pop this off. And it's got a snap ring that goes the whole way around. And so this bit can take you a lot of time. 
Now I'm in, and I've got it popped off there. I'm gonna to have to get some more screwdrivers because you've got to kind of jockey it back in around. So I've got a couple of little, well, four little screwdrivers here, and I'm just going to keep putting them in bit by bit. And until we're about halfway around, this doesn't come off, and it's just inclined to snap shut the whole time. So if I wedge that in like that, that might help. And then just, this seems to be doing it okay this way, so work it around inside. And then put in a screwdriver or something to hold it open, because what happens is it's inclined to snap shut. And be careful not to go through this gauze, you don't want to do that, obviously. So I'm just chasing it all the way around here. So I've held the front out, I'm chasing it all the way around. It's going. Halfway there. Don't get cocky yet, boy. Another one in there, so now I've got three screwdrivers in. I think we're getting there. Oh, and we're off, and it's, they all flew off. So it's loose all the way around. That's dusty too. Perhaps a boy should have tapped that out first. And then this bit here has to pull up gently. So I'm just, I should have showed you that, but just put my hands on top and just pulling this up and it's come off. And that's, this is the bit that gets clogged and washing it doesn't clean it. It just cakes the dirt in. I mean, washing it before you've disassembled it doesn't clean it. And so all this dirt just cakes in. You see these little passages here? It's like little fins. They should be clean. I'll do this with a, with a brush outside, or you could do it with a vacuum cleaner, but cleaning with a cleaner seems a bit silly. And that spring is well fixed there, so I'm not going to remove it. I'll leave it there and hope it stays in position. I see the dust on the bench already. This piece... Yeah, that's coming off. Okay, now any more over here? There will be. There will be more over here. This thing, slide it like that. Oh, am I doing it right? I'm not there yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. So there's a gasket here. I can lift that up all around. I'm gonna take it outside and dust it off first. So if you're the kind of person who's allergic to pets or dust or anything like that, this is gonna play havoc with your sinuses. Take a hay fever tablet or something first, or do it outdoors maybe, but it's uh, it really gets to me and it's just that it's summertime so I'm on my usual hay fever stuff so I can handle it but this stuff just does my head in. Right, what's holding this bit together? Don't know yet. What can I see? Sometimes there'll be screws, sometimes pirates. Yeah, there must be something because there's a little cone in each of these and they get dirty as well. So how do we get them apart? Let's try and clear out this dust here. Nothing going the whole way down the center. But there must be something. So what I would expect is a few screws holding this top plate onto this bottom plate. Aha, uh -huh, yes, okay, so I can see they've hidden them. Oh, balls, there's loads of them. You can't see. Let's see if we can get a torch. So like I say, I haven't been in here before, but let's see what we can see. There's one. See that silver thing? It's a little torque screw. Might make sense now when I start doing it on the bench. Yeah, what size are they? T10 or T15? One, two. Three. How to get these back in is a question. Four. Five, six. I don't know. It doesn't. I don't. I can't see them in each hole, but they might be dirty. Is that seven? Eight. 
eight. That one's loose, right? Yeah, and then the top just falls off. Okay, what's holding it on? There we go. Right, that's the top. That'll be easy to clean. Then here there is a load of screws now. So there's three over at the red piece, one, two, three, and then it's every second one from there on for the remaining five. Quite long. Good luck figuring out how to get them back in. Right, up on top then, we've got some kind of a... This isn't too bad up here, actually. Looking in there. How do we get this off? A few more. Just slide that down then. There's a gasket on here. I'm going to leave that in position. You could take it off. It's not too bad up this way. I'm surprised. So sometimes you can have all of this stuff completely filthy. But it is, you know, it's pretty filthy in there. Okay. So then this thing. How do we get it out? Down and up and out, is it? Yeah. And this spring has little legs on each end, and they come into play because it needs, they need to have tension on them to snap that red thing so that it springs upwards. So that's it. We're down to all the different parts. I'm going to give them a wash in some warm soapy water. So, give it a good massage with soapy, soapy water. You can rinse it or not rinse it if you want, I don't mind. see all that can you see it up in there there's a load of gray crud and that's what we're trying to get out because if you leave that behind what happens is it just attracts the next load it sets hard when it's can you see that yeah you can see it in the center there it sets hard and doesn't come out and then you're basically not worth doing the job so little bottle brush like this around see if this some just keep getting back in there I guess this depends on how dirty your appliance is all of these um, ports seem pretty clean. I don't know if you want to bother doing them. They don't have any residue or anything. Sometimes like these will be completely blocked. That's looking pretty good. Now I still see some crud in down there between them. So what I'm going to do is come at it from the other side. I'll leave my finger there. And what I'm trying to do is just clean every corner in there. The reason I'm leaving my finger in the one position is so that I know where I started. Could of course use counting. There's a couple of bits left. Overall, that's very good. Don't know why those two were difficult to get. There we go. I'm happy with that. Let's 
Now to rinse off. The thing about these things is, as soon as you wash them, you dry them, you put them back together, you use them again, and uh, they get dirty straight away. So this little gasket, I think, it's just a matter of giving it a rinse and uh, I don't want to damage it, so you don't, you don't squeeze it out or anything, you just have to let it dry. Well, maybe I can squeeze it. But you don't want to crush it. Sometimes I've seen these completely eroded, like worn away. Gotta watch out for that. So the mesh here, get it wet. You can clean most of this from outside, and you should every week, or every, really every time you clean the dust out of the canister. Now, whenever we go to put this back together, you gotta make sure it's dry. So what I'll do is leave it somewhere warm overnight. Kitchen can be a warm place. I don't know, whatever your house is like, different countries do different things different ways. Leave it by a vent outlet if you're in America and, uh, you know, have that kind of heating or blow air around the house. A register, is that what they're called? bigger washing up bowl would help as well. The bowls I use are glass bowls from washing machine doors, so that's kind of... I have plastic bowls as well, but just for whatever reason these have wound up out here in the garage. There's a rubber seal there. If you take it out, good luck getting it back in. So instead, just try and clean it carefully. You can take them apart, but it's not worth the hassle. Arguably, this job isn't worth the hassle, but hey, what are you gonna do? Now, inside. All right, it's the same as before. Sometimes these plastic bits are sharp, so rubber gloves can be helpful. So that's gotten that bit, and then it's just these holes here. Need my little brush again. Now, if you could do that underwater, so much the better, but, uh, but I haven't. Actually, I don't know why I'm saying that. I could probably do it like this. If you don't have this, use a toothbrush. If you, if you have a toothbrush that you won't get into different places, get a piece of wire, a piece of chopstick or anything, wood, kindling, grab a piece of kitchen, uh, kitchen, what do you call them, dishcloth around it. Anything, anything will do it. Just see a bit more on those blades there. Done. Oh, that was a bit loud. Two more bits to go. Now this one has a gasket on it, so you need to be careful. You can remove this gasket, but that's a pain. You could probably do this with a damp cloth because it's not that bad and it's quite smooth and all that. And you can take off this rubber thing up at the top as well, but it's real trouble to get back on too. And again, the same thing applies. The minute you use this, it's dirty.
And this bit here, I'll just give it a bit of a wipe. Here. Because, because I don't want water going in between here and here, so I just want to get that dust off the inside. That's all I want to do. I'll give it a general wipe down all around outside then the whole machine. Although that's a preference really, it doesn't do anything for it. I don't understand why they make things with little corners like this that are difficult to clean. I'll just pretend I don't hear sirens outside. Such is the rigors of working in a garage in a city. Now, 10 minutes of washing and that's it done. This is the filter. I should have uh, given this a wash as well. You can see, you steep it for a minute in some warm water and then it flows out black. Look at that. And that's the first rinse. I've tried putting these in washing machines before and uh, I can't see that it hurts them. They never perform the same once you've washed them. That's my experience of them. You can use soap, but uh, I don't know if it helps. Look at how dirty it gets. So do it and then wring it out. And then do it again. Now, it's hard to say if some kind of a disposable paper filter, like a bag, would be better. I'm not sure. I'm still not convinced about Dyson's. I think they're, they're, they've got smart, attractive designs bright colors and whatnot and they do the job but an old type vacuum cleaner with a bag see the water's coming out cleaner already an old type vacuum cleaner with a bag really really is quite good in my mind so that water is nearly clear do it again a few times if you want that's probably enough for me. Yeah. So that's about two minutes washing. Again, as with the rest of the thing, you've got to leave it to dry until that's really dry. So, somewhere to dry. There you go. It should be white. Right, it's tomorrow now, today, and it's raining outside, and I'm going to try and put this back together. And, as usual, I have no memory of how I did it. So, so this one, I think, did it go in there like this? And there was one bit with three screws. And it should line up with the one that has three screws. This one, the front, if you're going to call it the front. Is that correct? And then the, the, the lid bit went on top of that, I think. Is that right? Like this. I think that's correct. So let's twist this until it lines up. Alright, it seems to click a bit. It must have a place it likes. So. Maybe that's it. I hope. Oh, they don't want to go in like that. Come back out again. I think that's it really. And this bit goes on top like that. Now the question is how do you get those screws back in? I've given them a wipe. I've got the screwdriver, it's a T15 and I need to put a little magnet on it. So put that there, that should hold the screws on. Mm, doesn't seem to be very effective but let's see. So I can see one screw hole in here. No, that's not going to do it. This is the fun bit, obviously. Yeah, okay. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that's going in. That's going in fine. So I'll come back when they're all done. So I'm on the last one and I found, found it quite difficult to do. The magnet doesn't seem to 
seem to work at all on this screwdriver. I guess a stronger magnet might help. Or a magnetized screwdriver might help. You could probably do it that way. I have no idea what way I'm doing this. So this only goes together one way. Snap that shut. Now obviously you should have the filter in there. Now obviously you should have the filter in there, but this one is still damp. So I'm not going to put it anywhere near it for now. I'll put it away to the side again. So this thing... So that should rest up about here and then be pushed in by this. I wonder can you just pop it in? Yeah, you can. Okay. So that's how that's meant to be, and the spring's meant to be beneath it. To push it up and push it up that way. So, how can I get that in now? Like this, so that it pushes it up, and then I need to get this in here. So I need something pointy, like a small screwdriver. Is that meant to be pushing out or pushing in? Let's get the plastic. Am I forgetting anything? Yeah, there's a gasket. So this gasket... Is this way around? I can tell from the indentations on it. It doesn't appear to have a f orientation. It just goes, just goes on. Push it on down all the way around. Still a bit grubby. But like I say, as soon as you put it back together, it's going to get pretty grubby straight away. Okay, so this little spring guy here. I need to keep my eye on it. I'll try and slide these together. Now, I will attempt to hook this into position, like that. Okay, and then it should just snap shut. There's one. That's it. Snapped shut. Okay. Now, where are we going with this thing? Do I need to take it apart again? So I put this in here temporarily for now. Attach the thing on this side, in there, and then it snaps shut. And so I want this to stay out like that. So it has to stay out. So my spring has to be tucked in behind it, pushing it out. Okay, let's take that off. Let's lift this up. Clip that out. Snap this out. Yeah, okay. Spring goes in. To here, I think. Then. So I've got the spring hooked in here. And I've got to get it down. And get that out of the way for now. might just serve to fix it from the other end in a second. Crush the spring, compress it even, push this in like that, snap it in like that. Now I need to get that bit of the spring here, this little poppy bit in underneath that flap. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's right there, it's not quite right. So that should be lifting out rather than getting stuck like that. So I wonder, should the spring be captive in that little groove underneath? Maybe. I don't want to take it off completely, just want to take it off enough to get that out like that. I think 
you're going to have to take it off completely. Again, that out, pop this out, pull the spring down first. Okay, it's actually come down that way, so that's cool. Okay, so if I can curl this piggy tail around, push it into that slot, and then snap it shut, snap this shut on top of it, that should do it. Easier said than done. Because the spring wants to jump out and then rotate. No, it's not in yet. So if I hold the spring down, slide this back on. You know, that's not going to do it, is it? Because when this little thing goes in, it's not, it's going to catch that spring. If it's just caught like that, it'll do it, but that doesn't seem right. But I'll put this back on because it's not meant to get caught in there. I'm pretty sure of that now. So I'll get this spring here back in. That's it, back together. So I said this was going to be difficult, and it still is, right? Okay. Snap that in. It's working like that. If it's working like that, I'm not going to do anything about it. It's just It just needs to be popping it out, right? So then the next bit is this, this piece here, this gauze bit, and it'll have a little step in it that aligns with this step here. Be careful because you don't want to snap it and it gets tighter towards the end. Then pop it on and work it around. Fingers seem to be enough here. It's worked around the whole way around. That's it. Okay. Clip this on. Snap shut. That is right, but it feels a bit loose. Snap the end shut here. Yeah. And let's see if this works. Yeah, it does. So if that spring wasn't doing it right, that would not return upwards. So it's doing it right. That's it. So that's it all dusty again, because my bench is filthy. Dyson DC41. Don't forget to put your filter back in here. Just drop it in, it'll only go one way. And snap back in the machine, there you go. So that's it, that's how you rebuild the Dyson DC41 Vortex Cyclone Canister. Root Cyclone, Radial Root Cyclone Canister. Questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching, see you later.